He was a real tough, dangerous guy. A rebel without a cause that spread terror in a community. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're taking a closer look at 20 of the most infamous and terrifying serial killer couples in history. The crimes committed by Moore's murderer, Myra Hindley, shocked the nation. Yaroslav and Dana Stodolovi. Between September 2001 and December 2002, Yaroslav and Dana Stodolovi went on one of the most notorious and shockingly violent crime sprees in Czech history. The married couple, who had struggled for money in the past, ruthlessly targeted a number of elderly, retired, and presumably wealthy people, typically by forcing their way into their homes and then tying their victims up. The Stodolovis then robbed what they could before killing the people they stole from. In most cases, a combination of attempted cover-ups plus major mistakes by the investigating police meant that the pair was never even suspected. Until, after months of terror and a total of eight murders, they were found at the scene of the crime, and both were sentenced to life imprisonment. David and Catherine Burney The Morehouse murders are one of the darkest cases in modern Australian history. The Burneys drove around, waiting to spot a single girl to abduct. Stirling Highway was their favourite hunting ground. Girls were enticed to the car by what they thought was a harmless married couple asking for directions. They happened over the course of five weeks in 1986, when David and Catherine Burney of Perth lured five women and girls to their home at 3 Morehouse Street. The victims were subjected to horrifying sexual abuse, and in some cases, they were kept trapped in the residence for days. The first four women were murdered at the end of their ordeal, and their bodies were buried in a shallow grave. The fifth was able to escape, however, make it to the police, and ensure that her captors were finally caught. Both were sentenced to four terms of life imprisonment. The Burnies were sentenced to life on four counts of willful murder to be served concurrently. That meant a 20-year minimum jail term. But Justice Wallace said then, in my opinion, you should not be released from prison ever. James Marlowe and Cynthia Kaufman. Disturbingly, this killer couple also committed their crimes over a number of weeks in 1986, but this time in California and Arizona. James Marlowe and Cynthia Kaufman met shortly after Marlowe was released from a separate stint in prison. They then toured the country, got married, and began targeting and killing apparently random female victims. While it's thought that the true extent of their murder spree is still unknown, both Marlowe and Kaufman were convicted and sentenced to death in 1990. Kaufman, who is still living on death row, was the first woman to be issued with the death penalty following its reinstatement in California in 1977. Susan and Michael Bear Carson Susan Bear Carson, formerly Susan Barnes, and Michael Bear Carson, formerly James Carson, met and married shortly after James's first marriage ended in 1977. The couple labeled the San Francisco witch killers, Michael Bear Carson and his second wife Susan, smiling as the camera rolled. The pair became involved in mysticism, with James's first wife reportedly becoming frightened of him, which led to her breaking off all contact for the safety of her and their daughter. Meanwhile, though, Susan and now Michael truly did descend into madness and depravity. Between March 1981 and November 1983, the pair murdered three people, including two who Susan is said to have decided were witches. They were caught after killing their final victim on the side of the road, in full view of passing cars. They were later convicted of three murders and sentenced to 75 years to life in prison. Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka The most infamous couple in Canadian history, Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka killed three young women throughout the early 90s. Their first victim was Homolka's younger sister, Tammy. Two days before Christmas in 1990, the couple severely mistreated her. Tammy Homolka then choked on her vomit and died. Tammy Homolka's unexpected death would not signal the end of Paul and Carla's deviant games. The couple then kidnapped Leslie Mahaffey and Kristen French, only this time they intentionally killed the girls. After they were captured, Homolka conned the investigators and received a very favorable plea bargain in exchange for testifying against her husband. While Bernardo was sentenced to life, Homolka was freed on July 4, 2005. She has remained free ever since, and even started a family. Ultimately, the deal Carla made with the prosecution would stand. She would serve just 12 years for her part in the crimes. Fred and Rose West 
The horrific crime spree of Fred and Rose West lasted throughout much of the 70s and 80s. By the time they were finally arrested in the 90s, the couple had killed at least 10 people. The Wests would kill their victims inside their Gloucester house and bury their remains in the basement and yard. 25 Cromwell Street was the burial ground for nine young women. Fred was the more prolific killer of the two, having killed at least two people without the involvement of his wife. His personal body count may exceed 13. Fred and Rose West appeared at Gloucester Magistrates Court, jointly charged with nine murders. Rose helped kill nine women with her husband, in addition to her stepdaughter, whom Fred had from a prior marriage. Their Gloucester home later became known as the House of Horrors. Raymond Fernandez and Martha Beck. In 1947, a single mother of two named Martha Beck placed a personal ad in the newspaper, and it was answered by a man named Raymond Fernandez. Martha. Raymond. Beck developed an intense fascination with Fernandez and even sent her children away so she could devote herself to him. The two quickly fell into a routine of violence and killed at least three people in the late 40s. One was a 66-year-old woman named Janet Fay, and the other two were 28-year-old Delphine Downing and her daughter. Downing's neighbors alerted the police and the couple was arrested. Both were executed on the same day, March 8, 1951. Fernandez was 36 and Beck was 30. Oh my God. Oh my God. He kills me. Gwendolyn Graham and Kathy Wood. This couple worked as nurses' aides in Michigan's Alpine Manor Nursing Home. Beginning in January of 1987, the two conspired to kill elderly patients suffering from Alzheimer's. For the next few months, both Graham and Wood took the lives of five nursing home residents. Wood cooperated with police, telling them that Graham suffocated the women with washcloths while she was the lookout. Graham later began dating another nurse at the facility and moved with her to Texas, effectively ending the crime spree. However, Wood told her ex-husband about the crimes, and he in turn informed the authorities. Wood portrayed herself as a victim during the resulting trial, but it's now believed that she masterminded the whole enterprise to exact revenge against Graham, who had begun dating another woman. It worked, and Graham was given life in prison. I thought that Gwen was the first person to ever love me. Samantha Baczynski and Patrick Selipak. In Michigan in spring 2006, Samantha Baczynski and Patrick Selipak killed three people in a matter of days in a shocking crime spree that caught national and international attention. The pair first murdered a married couple, Scott and Melissa Barrels, who was pregnant at the time in the Barrels' own home. Then, while subsequently on the run, the couple also killed a man named Winfield Johnson. Johnson had offered Bajinski and Selipak a place to stay, unaware of the crimes that they had already committed. Over time, he found out, though, and Selipak shot him twice in the back. Almost 17 years later, in 2003, it was also reported that Selipak had attempted to murder another prisoner in jail, Bonnie Parker and Clyde Barrow. The story of Bonnie and Clyde has long captured the attention and imagination of America and the world. The most infamous outlaws of all were a pair of young lovers whose two-year crime spree included armed robbery, car theft, abduction, murder, and a series of dramatic gun battles across at least 11 states. The infamous outlaws were media sensations in the 1930s at the height of the Great Depression. As key figures in a notorious gang, the Barrow Gang, they were involved in numerous major robberies and multiple killings until their own violent deaths in 1934. In all, they're thought to have killed at least 13 people, and likely more. Thanks to a series of photographs discovered of them, including many of them posing with weapons, the couple is still insanely recognizable even today. But the legend of Bonnie and Clyde would continue to captivate the world for generations to come. At the time, they were among a select group of criminals referred to by authorities as public enemies. Michel Fourniret and Monique Olivier. Operating across France and Belgium for 16 years, between 1987 and their eventual arrest in 2003, Michel Fourniret and Monique Olivier murdered at least eight people, including multiple young girls. They had met via a prison pen pal scheme in the 1980s, at a time when Fourniret was serving a sentence for multiple sexual assaults. Back then, Fourniret had reportedly written of his depraved fantasies, and Olivier had responded saying that she would help him to fulfill them. Over the following years, after Fourniret's release, the couple would drive across France and Belgium concocting elaborate ruses to trick victims into their vehicle, after which they would abuse and ultimately kill them. Carol M. Bundy and Doug Clark 
these two met at a bar in 1980 and quickly developed a relationship. She instantly became infatuated with a man named Doug Clark. It wasn't long before Clark moved in with Bundy and embarked on his now infamous killing spree that would leave multiple people dead. While the two would later be known as the Sunset Strip Killers, the killings themselves were mostly committed by Clark. Two months later, Doug told Carol he killed the two runaways. The homicides troubled Bundy, but she nevertheless remained an accomplice, refusing to give up Clark. Bundy eventually told her ex-lover Jack Murray about the crimes, but she killed him to ensure his silence. However, the crime spree troubled Bundy so much that she eventually confessed to the authorities, and she and Clark were both arrested. She tells them that she and Doug are the serial killers they have been looking for. Alton Coleman and Deborah Brown. In 1983, Deborah Brown was engaged to be married when she met a criminal named Alton Coleman. They quickly developed a relationship, and Brown left her fiancé to be with Coleman. Coleman was facing a criminal trial relating to a previous crime when he and Brown fled Illinois to Wisconsin. He saw the approaching officer and took off. There, they killed the young Vernita Wheat. This began a killing spree that spread throughout the American Midwest. They were eventually caught and arrested on July 20th, 1984, having killed a total of eight people. With surprising ease, they were able to corner Coleman. Both were sentenced to death, but Brown was later spared and given life in prison. Coleman was executed by lethal injection on April 26, 2002. Gerald and Charlene Gallego Gerald and Charlene Gallego killed 10 people from September 1978 to November 1980. Charlene Williams came from a supportive family, but her life fell into disrepair when she started using drugs. Things got even worse when she met and married a career criminal named Gerald Gallego. He thought he was God's gift to women. Their crime spree began on September 11, 1978, when they abducted two teenage girls. The Gallegos were caught abducting an engaged couple in November of 1980, and the police were promptly informed. College sweethearts Mary Beth and Craig would be Gerald and Charlene's final victims, as their abduction led to their arrest. This led to their arrests, and Gerald was sentenced to death. Charlene was given nearly 17 years in exchange for testifying against her husband. Charlene's testimony allowed the prosecution to secure the sentence they desired. Henry Lee Lucas and Otis Toole. The names Henry Lee Lucas and Otis Toole are well known. For a time, it was believed that Lucas had killed over 600 people, making him the most prolific killer in American history. Lucas bragged to police that he killed more than 600 men, women, and children. Toole claimed 125 victims. However, it was later found that these confessions were fabricated so that Lucas could enjoy rewards in prison. Lucas and Toole likely developed a sexual relationship after meeting in 1976, and the extent of their crimes remains ambiguous. They met at a soup kitchen in Jacksonville, soon became lovers, and moved in together at Toole's mother's house. Lucas was confirmed to have killed two people in 1983, and eight other victims remain disputed. Toole is widely suspected of having killed the young Adam Walsh in 1981. The nature of their crimes may forever remain uncertain. But they nevertheless conspired to fool the authorities and wasted precious time and resources in the process. He died in prison on September 15, 1996. Ian Brady and Myra Hindley. Known as the most evil woman in Britain, Myra Hindley embarked on a horrific crime spree with her boyfriend, Ian Brady. The crimes committed by Moore's murderer, Myra Hindley, shocked the nation. Between July 1963 and October 1965, Brady and Hindley killed five young persons and dumped at least some of their bodies in the Saddleworth Moor. It's because of this that their crime spree is now known as the Moore's murders. A case like this was unique. For the first time in British history, a woman had been implicated in a killing partnership. One of their victims buried at the moor was Leslie Ann Downey. The couple's dealings with Downey were captured on tape and in various photos, ensuring that Brady and Hindley became infamous public enemies in Britain. She's got the devil in it. She's the devil itself. Charles Starkweather and Carol Ann Fugate. These two met in 1956, when Starkweather was 18 and Fugate 13. Starkweather quickly grew attached to Fugate and dropped out of high school to be closer to her. The two eventually began a relationship, and Starkweather killed Fugate's mother, stepfather, and sister on January 21, 1958. I think he got in an argument 
uh, over Carol with uh, Mr. Bartlett, and I think it just escalated from there. They were Starkweather's second, third, and fourth victims, as he had killed a gas station attendant the previous November. Starkweather and Fugate then embarked on a crime spree throughout Nebraska and Wyoming that left a further seven people dead. In the space of less than two months, 11 innocent people had died in a killing spree that sent shockwaves around the United States. Fugate claimed that she never personally took a life, but Starkweather said otherwise. Regardless, Starkweather was executed for his crimes, and Fugate was released from prison in 1976 after spending 17 years behind bars. Until they had been stopped, they would have kept going. There was nothing behind. They had no remorse. They had no reason. Ray and Faye Copeland. From 1986 to 1989, Ray and Faye Copeland conspired to kill five men, although their victim count may be as high as 12. They appeared to be just an elderly farm couple that were uh, kind of shy and, and didn't mix much with the people. The Copelands ran a farm in Mooresville, Missouri, but Ray was a proven fraud, so local providers refused to sell him cattle. To get around this, Copeland devised a scam. He would pick up drifters, write them fraudulent checks, and have them buy the cattle for him. There were eight men wanted for writing bad checks to cattle auction houses in central Missouri. All had disappeared from the area without a trace. He would then sell the cattle for a profit before the checks bounced and kill the drifter who bought it to ensure their silence. Despite the efforts of her defense team, Faye was found to be a knowing accomplice to her husband, and both were sentenced to death. Ray Copeland was convicted of five counts of murder and sentenced to death. Alvin and Judith Neely. In 1980, 27-year-old Alvin Neely left his first wife and eloped with 16-year-old Judith Adams. Two years after their marriage, the Neelys kidnapped the young Lisa Milliken from a mall in Rome, Georgia. Milliken was subsequently taken to an Alabama motel and killed. Just a few days later, the Neelys did the same thing to Janice Chapman after shooting her fiancé John Hancock. However, Hancock survived and reported the Neelys to the authorities. The next day, he was at the Rome police station sitting on a bench when he heard a recording of Judith Neely's voice. They were promptly arrested, and 18-year-old Judith Neely became the youngest American woman ever sentenced to death. However, this was later commuted to life in prison in 1999. You don't see those crimes around here. That's something that uh, you always hear about somewhere else, and, and it, was, uh, it was just uh, a tragedy. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Inessa Tarvierdieva and Raman Potkapayev. Hailing from Stavropol, Russia, Inessa Tarvierdieva and Raman Potkapayev were part of the Gang of Amazons. This serial killing family also consisted of the couple's two children, Victoria and Anastasia. The entire family was supposedly aided by Potkapayev's sister and her husband, a law enforcement officer who fed the family inside information. Between 2007 and 2013, the Gang of Amazons embarked on a massive crime spree that left dozens dead. The victims included a lieutenant colonel and his family, and a patrol officer who pulled over Potkapayev and Victoria. However, it was this confrontation that proved their downfall. Potkapayev was killed by responding officers, and the rest of his family was rounded up and arrested. Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.